So it's a great pleasure for me as the chairman of Art Mine in Trafayak to welcome Mitch Walking Elk to play concert here tonight in Trafayak. Um, I had the pleasure of spending the day with you yesterday. Very, very interesting person. Mitch, could you tell us something about yourself, please? Well, you know, first of all, my pleasure also to be here. And, you know, thank you very much for all your support. Uh, I'm a member of the Southern and Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes of Oklahoma. I'm also part Hopi, the state of Oklahoma, in uh, what we call Turtle Island, what the government of America calls the United States of America. And I'm on tour here in, uh, I'm on tour here in uh, Austria, and Germany, and Bulgaria. I've probably been here close to 40 times in Europe, touring music, France, uh, etc., different countries. And, uh, and I wanna uh, promote, promote my uh, book, uh, There Will Be No Surrender, but I also wanna promote my music. I have uh, seven CDs and uh, you know, I look forward to the future coming to Europe to play music. Yeah, I, I, I was with you yesterday when you were doing uh, talks for, for students in the school and uh, I was personally amazed at the, your stories and the things you've been through in your life and also at your music. Uh, it's very unusual. You also won an award for, as for blues music, for playing blues? Yeah, actually two blues awards, one in 2005 and one in 2013. Uh, the 2005 award was uh, with the Indian Summer Music Festival in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and uh, which is the Indian version of uh, giving awards for music. And then the big one though was uh, what we call the NAMIs, the Native American Music Awards, which was also a blues award, which was, uh, I think, uh, the first one, 2005, was uh, an award for a song. The second one was an award for the CD, a yeah, blues CD. And, you know, I always, I always say nobody's more surprised than me because my early years of music was starting out in country music yeah. and going from country to protest music. And then somewhere along the way, I ran into the blues. Yeah. But uh, I listened to some of your songs yesterday as well. And I noticed your songs have got a, a, a background, <clears throat> um, songs about the buffalo, I've seen the buffalo are going to come back, and, and, and songs about the, the country and about the people. Um, your heritage as an indigenous American is very important for you, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's, it's number one. It's the first thing. Uh, and the song on the, that you mentioned, When the Buffalo Come Back, is actually written by a friend of mine by the name of D Dave Crosslands, who allowed me to record it years ago. But I have a number of other songs that are protest songs, which I also like to call songs of empowerment. And I have to admit that those really are my power songs. Those are where, and when I want to rock the house or, or really get a message across, I sing the, the songs of empowerment, the protest songs. But I also love to play the blues and, uh, and some soft rock and love songs and things of that nature. Yeah, I was also amazed at, at your, talk, your voice. You got a beautiful voice and, and it, the timbre of your voice is very unusual. It's not, uh, it's just unusual. It's, it's something, is there, is there a typical in, indigenous voice timbre that they that the, that the have in their voice or is it just your personal note? Because your note is very, very interesting, very, very original. I don't know, you know, for me, for me singing, has always been, when I was a young boy, and I'm, I'm talking young boy, eight, nine years old, I knew I could sing. And I would make up songs on the spot. And so I guess that was my first effort at songwriting. I knew I could sing, I knew I had a voice, and one years later when I attended college, I went to, um, I took voice lessons just to see what I could learn about singing. And one day, I, I said, wow, did that come out of me, <laughs> you know? And, and, the, and the being able to sing and being able to have a voice has been a real, real blessing. And I also noticed yesterday that when you were doing your talks for the students, that it's very important for you that they pick up the message. You, uh, you, you really try to engage them in the conversation, get them involved in your music, in your songs, in your person. I think I've noticed that getting the message across is really important for you, isn't it? 
Well, you know, you know, I work in a school at home, and I have for I worked in the education field since uh, 1991. And what's important for me is not that the student gets a good grade. What's important for me is that they learn what I'm teaching them, and if that gives them a good grade, good. But if they learn what I'm teaching and and still don't get a good grade, I prefer that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you also told me yesterday that you work with uh, young indigenous people mm -hmm. to teach them the ceremonies and, and, and these important rituals from the tribes to the tribe people yeah. that they don't forget where they come from or where their spiritual energy come from. That seems to also be one of your topics that very interests you a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, well, um, I, I work in a school. It's, it's a Guadalupe Alternative Programs. It's located in St. Paul, Minnesota. And four and a half years ago, I was approached about uh, having a mentoring program for Native youth within the St. Paul School District, not necessarily just our school. And it was a mentoring program and, and, and uh, we chose the topic of uh, uh, teaching ceremonies. And so I, I, keep a, I keep a very small group so that it can have a positive impact and be successful and not just be able to spout off or talk about having high numbers and and it's been very successful yeah but uh that's i that's what i feel about personal about you myself you're you're a very intense person you know you're intense in what you do you're you're a funny guy but you're intense your message is not it's not just uh you're not making noises here you're you're, you're really have something to say and and, and um you c it comes across in your professional music in your songs in the way you talk to kids and, and to young students and also in your approach to the way you just live so i think that's a you're very, you seem to be very sort of a homogeneous person, you know, you seem to be very, you seem to be peaceful in yourself, but also seems to be fighting inside to get your message out too. Yeah, well, you know, being, being Indianer, I guess you could say being an indigenous man and uh, going, going through the things that I went through growing up in America, confronted by the, uh, the white man's system, which is very one-sided, very unfair, very racist. Um, you develop, you either survive or you don't. Yeah. And I survived. Yeah. And, and uh, in the surviving process, I'm gonna bring people with me. Yeah. You know. Another thing I'd like to ask, I saw, um, I was in contact with you during the summer and you were in Rome and you took mm -hmm. your young students to Rome to meet some delegation from the Vatican to get to tell them Hey guys, it's about time you sort of uh, like came across with a statement of what you've done to us, you know? Yeah. That's also something that, that, that's very important, isn't it? Yeah, well, the Vatican, the various popes over the centuries, uh, past centuries, uh, drafted some papal decrees that were destructive to indigenous people all over the world. And those have never been revoked. They have never been repealed, rescinded. They've never been taken away. And they've had a devastating effect for the indigenous people in our hemisphere not just in the united states and canada but in our hemisphere and the and the vatican the catholic church needs to accept the responsibility for what their predecessors set in motion and they need to reverse it and they need to do something to make amends for the, what we are still reeling from they their comment to us when we were there was that that they don't want to focus on the past. They don't operate under that banner anymore. And they prefer to focus on the future and the present. Yeah. And we said, we get that, but what you need to understand is that we are still dealing with what happened in the past. Yeah. And when, when you accept responsibility for that, then maybe we can move on. But we will move on regardless. Yeah. But in, in your book, and I didn't read your book yet, I thank you for the copy, but um, I'm looking forward to it. It's my weekend now to be reading your book. But you said um, at six years of age, they dragged you from your mother's arms and, and sent you off to a boarding school to try and take everything indigenous out of you, to make you a white boy and to mm -hmm. stop you from knowing anything about your people. And that seems, you said, that's the day you decided, I'm going to fight, I'm going I'm to yeah. rebel against this system. Yeah, that's the day I become a, an indigenous rebel. 
resistance. Yeah. And, and they failed. With me, they failed. Yeah. Their boarding school system to turn me into to a, a white man, white boy, uh, it failed. But, you know, I learned to read and write. I learned to some things about hygiene, but I also learned how to, how to uh, uh, become institutionalized. I learned how to uh, take abuse. I learned how to uh, ma be manipulative so I could survive through that and the other institutions that came later. Yeah. Last question, that's a very, I'd like just to ask you, it's, just, it's up to yourself if you want to answer or not. Um, today's world seems to be crazy, you know, a lot of egoism, egocentric people, there seems to be very little community spirit, everybody's looking after number one, and um, the kids, as you saw in the school, they're preoccupied with lots of things, with their hand, with their mobile phones and all the different things. What, would, what do you think we need now to get people back to be, have a more community spirit or to get more involved with each other on a personal level, not just in cyberspace. Do we, how do we get back to a little bit of community spirit? Because it's, it's going lost in every place. In Austria, the clubs are finding it difficult to find football players or fire brigade kids or, this, or the Boy Scouts. Nobody wants to get involved in anything except the cyberspace. How, how, how do you think there's a way we can get kids back into realizing the most important thing is the personal relationships? That's a, that's a big, big order. Um, in, uh, in the 70s, a group of indigenous elders met and they were asked what they thought that the young Indian people needed. And they said uh, to get along. And, and uh, we also, technology with all of its awesomeness and its power is also has also become devastating. And we have prophecies from our, from our spiritual people from different tribes that say that technology is going to lead down a road that is going to be, and the end result is going to be a destruction. And so that's where we're headed. And so people need to get back to becoming human beings. They need to get back to having uh, respect for uh, the, the nature, um, respect for those, those beings that live in the nature. They need to take a good look at what we know as the original instructions and how they say to live and interact with the natural and the supernatural world. That's a big order. This is a different part of the world and yeah. the world is different here, but yeah. those are some things that yeah. would be helpful, I believe.